So guys, you know what? We're into quarter two. I don't know how you're going right now. Is it working out for you right now or not? But one of the things I started to talk about this year is about social media. And I've got a special guest here today, Clinton from sprinkler.media. Is that right? Spot on. You got yeah. it. So Clinton for me, it's all about like, if you're not evolving, you're dissolving, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of agents are putting their feet in the water slowly mm -hmm. into this social media space. And I know you work with one of my clients, a mutual client of ours, yes. Patrick Byron from Ray White Botany Green Square. Yep. And he's moving that needle in social media. Now I've got to tell you something, can I make a confession? Yes. So my business has always been this traditional thing, letterbox drops, door knocking, the whole bit, right? Yep. So Patrick and I were having this conversation and we're talking about plans for the next year, talking this year, meeting 2017. Hmm. But back in 2016, he was saying to me, listen, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this social media thing and I've met this guy and I'm gonna take my business this direction, I reckon for next year and I'm gonna cut more out of my letterbox drops and, and here I am playing the, the safe coach going, are you sure you wanna be doing that? I and got a different impression, I thought. Cause yeah. he came to me and he said that you were actually supportive of it, which well, is brilliant. But here's the so thing, have... you, you know what, the more I started to think about it because I've started moving my business, you know, down this, this, this space, down that digital space, social media space. Yep. And, but it's always, you've got to be cautious, you know, because we like to play it safe. We know what's working. Yep. You know, letterbox drops, is, he was getting a lot of traction from that. He was getting a lot of traction from door knocking. But when you're going into this new space of social media, you think, oh God, is this going to work going out? To work, yeah. You know, but then I did say to him, you know what, buddy, you know, this is the new environment in 2017. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I'll be on this journey with you. Yep. And whatever Clinton decides to do, I'm with it behind you. And it good, seems to be good, taking good. off really, really mm. well for him. Mm. Um, so today, I, I suppose, could you give us an insight of the agent, what they should be doing with social media and what you did with Patrick, I suppose, because he's a great little project of yours, okay? Going from a yeah. traditional agent, yep. now moving into this maybe 3.0 type agent, being in social media, etc. Yeah, so there was a couple of different stages that we started with uh, when Patrick and myself first started working together. It was really a consulting, um, I was giving him advice, he was getting out there and doing it himself sort of approach. Mm -hmm. So what we found is um, he would go out there and he'd start practicing posting on his page, he was doing a bit of Instagram work. And um, you tend to find, especially when you're working long days, the timing yes. to actually get in there and do it yourself can be a bit of a challenge, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, coming to this year, essentially what we then did is we said, all right, let's up the game a little bit and let's get me a little bit more involved in collaborating with you and, and potentially doing some bits and pieces together. Um, and what we discovered is there's a couple of key elements to doing social media well. Number one is consistency. Yeah. yeah. Got to be consistent with it, right? So it doesn't matter if you're doing it three times a week um, or if you're doing it once a day, you want to stick to it. Yes, I agree. Very, uh, very important part of it. Because I see a lot of agents, what they tend to do is they put a post and then three weeks later you see the next post. Exactly. And when you're saying consistent, a lot of the people, a lot of these agents are time poor. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And they don't have a strategy around it. It's just like, let's just spray and pray. Let's just ad hoc this, you know, on the run, you know? Yeah, what yeah. content will I put out today? I haven't done a sale in two weeks, so I don't know what to put out. Yeah. I've done a sale today, let's, let's post that. Yeah. But it's too infrequent, you know? Yeah. And, and one of the things, that I know going to traditional space, say letterbox drops is, if you're consistently out there, there's a level of trust. I think consistency builds trust and yeah. that can also come in that social media realm, right? Absolutely. What, just to take a step back too, when it comes to marketing, when you think about letterbox drops versus newspaper versus digital versus yep. social media, the game hasn't changed in terms of telling your story, getting the information out there to people, trying to market yourself. It's just where the attention now sits. Mm. So when you pick up your mobile phone these days and you look around, you see so many more people using this device. Yes. And I would guarantee right now, if you were to ask people what they're doing on their phones more constantly on a daily basis, Facebook's gonna probably be number one. Yep. Instagram's gonna be up there in the top five. That's me. Exactly <laughs> right. And so then what it comes down to is um, understanding the audience. So who is it that I'm actually really trying to reach? You know, yeah. What type of buyer is it? What type of seller is it? Yeah. Um, so we did some interesting work this year and I, I have a connection with a, a group called HubSpot. Yep. And um, they're very big on this thing called inbound marketing. And one of the parts of inbound marketing is learning your buyer persona. Right, okay. And a buyer persona, is, it's no different than understanding really who the buyer and the seller is yeah. that you're working with on yeah. the day-to-day. -day. Understanding your client, right? Exactly, understanding your client. So um, Patrick and myself invested some time into actually getting in there and interviewing one by one by one all these different clients. So like actually do like a bit of a survey on these people. Proper survey. And right. I, I'm not kidding you when I say this, we'd get on the phone yeah. and have a conversation with a client for 30 minutes. Really? Easily. And could I just ask you, what were some of the questions you would ask some of these clients? Just to, you know, like just give us a couple what? of questions. Um, <clears throat> so, so trying to understand the client, obviously. Yeah, so like how did you connect with Patrick in the first place? 
Okay. Was a good question to yeah. know. Yeah. Um, another really good question was what made you want to deal with Patrick over somebody else? Ah, right. And the okay. kind of insights you get from that yeah. um, is very interesting. And one of the biggest parts of doing this type of research is understanding where people are and what they're looking for. Right, okay. So, so doing this research, yeah. what did that help you build with Patrick in terms of his social media? Well, we realised obviously very quickly there's certain bits of information different types of people want. Yeah. And then it became a case of how do we get that information, right? He's yeah. time poor. Yes. So we decided that a really cool thing to do would be to jump in there and actually go out and document for a day what he actually gets up to. Yeah, right. And to do some stuff. And if you go and check out Patrick Byron's page, you can see some really cool things where he's interviewing people in the local area, where yeah. he rides a train into the city and comes back. Yeah, I saw that. You know, Eight minutes too from Mascot. <laughs> exactly, yeah, you know. And, yeah. and it's all about um, it's all about telling a story because yeah. social media is exactly what that's there for. Yeah. How well you can tell the story and how well you can get that attention yes. is the key difference, right? So we're trying to be a little bit edgy with the type of stuff we're putting out. Yeah, right. You know, some cool music, some good editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Well, um, I love it. I, I've only just, you know, starting getting tastes of it mm. and it's sweating my appetite every time I see it. That's good. That's Patrick's asking me, is this working? Is this working? And I've got to tell you, it's certainly, it's having a profound effect on me because I keep watching the whole video. Yep. And I think you guys were like doing some sort of competition, $100. Yep. Visa card, if you something watch the video, I can't remember what's at the end of the yeah, video. Yeah, so it's just a simple So I watch like, the whole video and I go, where do I enter my details <laughs> with this Visa card? And I'm like, they got me. All you gotta do is comment and comment on the video. You're right, okay, you're okay. In. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful. So, um, it's doing it's doing fun things like that. So there's there's a couple of different things Patrick wants. So uh, one is to put out good content. Yep. Um, the second thing is to engage more with the community. Yes. Which I think is very relevant because um, and uh, let's get into the, what a lot of real estate agents do, which probably we should move away from. Um, you tend to notice on social media when people are posting, it's all the listings, you know, it's the same kind of stuff over and over again. Listing, so, sales, yep. maybe not testimonial, yep. putting it up one, one post every two weeks perhaps, yep. if that, yeah. Exactly right. So um, the and, key differentiator yeah. is the content you put out yep. um, and also tailoring that content to your end user because um, yes, the product is important. Yes, yes, people want to know about what's in a property. Yes. But they also want to know about you, the agent. Yeah, okay. Now, what, what do you say to people that sometimes, I get some agents, but Claudio, my personal page, I'll get, you know, 50 hits and 50 likes. Yeah. And when I use my business page and I put a piece of content out, I'm lucky if I get one like. Okay. So what's, what do you say to that, like when, okay. when agents say that? Because that's so, where they get that's where they get demoralising. You know what? Yeah. It hurts their ego. Yep. And I don't know about you, but agents have got big egos. No, just kidding. <laughs> right? It's like, that hurts. Damn, like, I only got one like, right? So what can, I suppose, what, what, what do you say to that? Like, okay. So there's a, there's a few really simple things that you can do that help. Um, you cannot avoid, when it comes to Facebook pages, yep. putting a little bit of budget into it. Yes. So the first thing I'll say to you guys is, if you're going to put out a piece of content, then Facebook allows you to target very specifically who it is that you want to target. Right, okay. You can't do that on a personal page. No. You can put out a piece of content and all your friends or anyone you're connected with will correct, see Correct, correct. But on a business page, I can now say, I want to target, you know. That type of demographic type of person. Yes. They live in that area for that long. They yes. go, kids go to that school, yep. et cetera, et cetera, right? Yep, and as you start to define audience, so if you've ever done Facebook advertising, you get in there and start to define the different types of people you want to get, the yeah. type of behaviour. Yes. If they've been doing research recently, they're looking for a property, yeah. you can put that in there. Wow. Okay. And when you put that in there, all of a sudden they're you know, doing their research on realestate.com, whatever it may be. Yes. And then in their feed comes up your latest listing or your yeah. latest story with an interview with somebody you didn't like. So it's area. just that your name is continually coming up the feed, even though they yeah. may not like like hit a like on it, mm -hmm. you're coming up through these people's feed in that yes. area, in that yeah. postcode. Yeah. How cool is that? It is. Yeah. And the return on investment, you don't always see it through engagement necessarily, but sometimes offline people will actually come and approach you and say, hey, I saw this video of, yeah. you know, hey, I've been thinking about selling my property for a while now. And this actually yes. happened. Well, it, it does. I know, I know it's happened to me. And I don't get many likes on my, <laughs> either my videos. Please like my video. If you're watching now, share as well. <laughs> Make a comment. Tell me how wonderful you love it. But I remember me, two, my last two gigs for keynote speaking was Har well, Harcourt's coming up and Langan Simmons. Mm -hmm. And both of those guys, I asked the people, how did you hear about me? Both said Facebook. And none of them either follow me or hit like or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do have that demographic, you know, million dollar listing, real estate coach. I have all these yeah. different hashtags, trying and get the right people see my, my content. Yeah. And people just saying, hey, I liked your video. And I'm like, do I know you? <laughs> Where do I know you from? Yeah. So it makes a lot, a lot of sense. It does. Yeah. It absolutely does. Um, interesting story for myself. Um, the reason I did business with Patrick in the first place is because I was actually selling my property in Botany. Oh, right. But if you rewind a little bit and you think about uh, how we actually got to that point, 
We'd lived in Botany for six years. Yeah. And consistently, we kept seeing stuff come up for Ray White Green Square. Yeah, right. Because Billy, the principal at, at Ray White, is very big on Facebook. Yes. And so he's consistently, for six years, put out bits and pieces of content. So it was very difficult for me to want to go anywhere else other than straight to that agency. Yep. And then to work with Patrick because he's such a good guy. Yep. Simply off the back of all that work that had gone into Facebook. But I'd never gone and liked a photo. I'd never gone and shared any of the content. content. But you but always there. there, always seeing him in there. Absolutely. Isn't that interesting? Okay, we're going to have a break. We're going to go to part two, where we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook Live yep. auctions. Yep. And Patrick's just done this recently, and I love it the way he's been doing this. Yep. And also, how can we use some of that social media to basically, again, find new business, future business, yep. and talk about some ideas, and then we'll probably wrap it up and see what exactly how people can maybe find you mm -hmm. and maybe do what you've been doing with Patrick. All right. Okay? Sounds Let's good. see you on the other side of the break. Done. <laughs> Perfect. Good to see you, brother. <laughs>